Hey everyone, I'm Nigel Bartow, and I'm going to read a short piece for you from my latest book uh, called Feed Me. Uh, Feed Me is a, a collection of short stories. And the story that I'm going to read to you was born uh, in LA. I stayed in LA for a, a brief time years ago, and I, I met and saw people who were who were searching, who were looking for a better way. And I rode the bus often when I was in LA. Imagine that, riding it through downtown Los Angeles uh, instead of being in a car on the freeway. And one time when I was on the bus, I saw this guy and uh, he was telling his uh, life story in the back of the bus. And uh, he was a bright guy, a top student once um, at a top college. Um, but he was alone out there, and uh, something cracked. I don't know what exactly, um, but he had a nervous breakdown, and he, uh, he just couldn't deal. Um, so he had to leave school, and now he spent a lot of his time riding the buses, and while he rode the buses, he, uh, he tried to sell his poetry uh, for spirit change. So that day when I saw him, and I guess it probably was a bit of a rough week for me maybe, but that day that I saw him, it was like walking up to my fear. The fear of how easy it would be for me to be that guy. Or the fear of just not wanting to be him at all. And, you know, I saw the people like that out there. So the story is inspired by that. That alone feeling, that aloneness. Um, and grabbing on to whatever you have. Um, so the story is about a, a young, restless man uh, who's searching. He's not sure where he's going. And, uh, but he has a lady friend that he cares uh, a lot for. She does it for him. Um, but she's over the border, across the border. She's Canadian. And uh, she cares for him too, but she's not sure where he's going either. Um, so this story is a reflection of, that, of one night. One night he has a lot of crazy thoughts, and the only thing he knows what to do is to grab onto the one rock, and the one rock is his lady friend. And uh, so through all those crazy thoughts, he acts. And uh, this is, again, a short, short piece of that uh, reflection of that night. So, and the piece is called Impulsive. She gave me such a high, but I never knew when I was going to get a rush. It was usually a slow, long night when I would get a charge from her, sometimes twice a week. Often it was late Sunday or Thursday night. I didn't know why those nights. I never knew. It was when I least expected it, but most needed it. One good thing about this drug was when it came, it lasted for hours and days. I pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled. The feeling lingered on like I was free falling after the initial rush was gone. It certainly kept me wanting more and loving every minute the feeling was there. It was never too much and really too little. It started a couple years ago when we were first introduced. I never figured it would be so lethal and satisfying. I guess big things came in little packages. The other day, I did something that will seem foolish and impulsive in years to come. I asked the drug to stay with me permanently, to live and be one with me. I was consumed with all types of thoughts about the direction my life should take and where was I and wanted to be and I wanted to stay happy. I decided to go for a walk, to clear my head and think some more, but it only got more cluttered. I walked for blocks and talked to myself. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen this crazy looking person before on the street. I found myself on Wilshire Boulevard and in a desperate move I headed for McDonald's. I was not sure why, I wasn't terribly hungry, but I wanted to, no one needed something to do, and a fast food joint was the answer. I ordered chicken McNuggets and ate near the door. I was alone. Others in there ate alone too, but they really looked alone. I mean, alone in life, alone forever. I hoped I didn't look like them. That just cannot ever be me. I was frightened at the thought. In that scary moment, I decided I must make a change, take the plunge, do something different or drastic. I was talking to myself again. I left McDonald's and hurried home so I would not change my mind. I settled on the plunge I was going to take. I repeated it to myself on the way. I was going to ask my Canadian drug to be with me forever. She would give me high every day and night. I called for her, my little drug. 
she was dead to the world, but I revived her. I told her I wanted to be with her for a long time. I wanted to get married. Dead silence. What? I imagined her rubbing the sleep from her eyes and her petite body rolling in her bed. That night was fuzzy. I couldn't fully explain what I wanted and why I wanted it, except I desperately didn't want to be one of those persons who grows old, talks to himself all day, and drinks coffee at burger places, alone, late at night. I longed for bigger doses of the rush, and maybe I could have it and make it last forever. I talked myself into word knots, and in her tired voice she tried to help untangle me. She really cared. She didn't doubt her emotions. It was mine she wasn't sure about. Were they temporary, fleeting? What was really going on with me, she wanted to know, and why was I so far from her in the first place? We managed to come to an agreement before she went back to sleep. She would continue exposing me to small doses at a time. I was on ration. And she would increase servings of happiness over time to see if and how I would handle it. I wanted to overdose, but she was in control, so that was the plan. I said okay and hung up and went to bed. I slept off my delirium and my mind cleared. Desperation and loneliness were no longer strangling me and after days of sobering thought, I admitted to myself that I would fail at this, that I couldn't really manage the highs I needed to flourish. I had doubts. Forever was a long time, even if it was a wonderful drug. Forever was... Well, forever. In a flash, I changed my game plan. I pushed away from the drug and ignored that I asked for forever. I couldn't deal. My head was a wreck. I was a mess. She said, okay.